<laughs> no touching. <laughs> Whew. Right, so we've made it up to the trick point, which is uh, obviously the highest point round here, and it's very windy. <laughs> so uh, we're going to head along a bit further now, down, going to follow the ridge all the way along and go back down the other side, because the car's sort of about halfway along down here, so ready to find this pond. <laughs> to these rocks and these rocks are showing the lines quite prominent and defined you can see the the different layers so you've got the section there the next section the next section and you see onto this one coming down here that you can see <laughs> you can see the different uh, structure lines in the actual thing now as far as I know that's the water current changing when this was at the bottom of the water um, but I don't know I'm not I'm not no rock scientist so if I'm completely wrong and it's just wind and wind and hail then uh, can someone tell us you know but I was told I know at Brimham Rocks which I've been to check out a video of I've done put a link up good pugged up wasn't it uh, Brimham Rocks that was actually formed by the the current under the water these I'm not so sure about because they're not rounded off but there's definitely some prominent lines in the in the rock faces to identify that it could be so yeah if someone knows all about this sort of geology and that let us know I'm always interested to find out stuff like that it fascinates me it really does Oh, especially that one look at that you can see the lines in that so prominent that one there so so prominent that one and this one here so the lines are going one way then they're going straight and then they're coming back the other direction so let me know let me know they're taking the mick out of me about my batteries it's not nice is it we're still heading across the top of the roaches um, Owen's just been reading up about the history up here. Apparently the rocks were deposited from a mountain range up north um, and landed here sort of thing. And uh, say again. Why did you say reading up? It could have been like I knew. Yeah, like he, well, no, he didn't read it up. He knew, he said he, he didn't read it. He knew it all. He didn't, he was reading it up. He's Google, good old Google. Um, we're heading towards Doxy Pool, I think it is. Dixie Pool, Doxy Pool, Daxy Pool. It's a pool of water up here, which I've been mentioning before. Um, and again, checking out the information, there's a lovely little uh, mermaid that lives there. So that'd be nice and interesting to see. I might put the GoPro in the water. Apparently her name's Jenny Greenteeth. Uh, I don't think I know her. These two seem to think I do, but... <laughs> Jenny Greenteeth, apparently, she uh, walked into the pond um, in the foggy and the fog once. Never been seen again, so she enchants other people in. Um, so yeah, she's a blue nymph. So if you're up in this way in the dark at night or it's foggy, stay away from the water. That's for sure. Unless, <laughs> unless you're into that, Owen said. Tut tut. Right, let's see if we can find her. Let's get the camera out. Let's get the GoPro out and uh, plop it in the water and see what happens.
Well, we are nearly there. There's, oh, <laughs> excuse my wife mashing my tripod. <laughs> There's a uh, Dox, Doxy Pool, I think it's called. Um, it is only a pool. It's not a, not a lake or anything like that or a tarn. It's just a pool. Um, apparently, rumor has it as well that it's bottomless, which makes no sense whatsoever because if it was a bottomless water, where would the water be stopping? So there's got to be something stopping it. So it can't be bottomless. And I've just noticed the cotton grass. But one thing we have noticed as we walked along is all the dead trees uh, where they've been burnt. Somebody's obviously had a fire here at some point or whether it's a fire or barbecue or natural. If you look down there, there's a lot, a lot of burnt trees, an awful lot. But yeah, this cotton grass is beautiful. Really pretty. Let's have a quick nose and have a look. Look at this. How nice is that? All this little cotton grass and the rocks behind it. I don't think there's a picture in it. Um, I don't think there is anyway. Or is there? Maybe it's worth taking a picture of the cotton grass up close and having the rocks in the background. Maybe there is. While they're having a look at the pool, let's get the camera out and just take one. Just one, just if I can get some cotton grass, it'd be quite nice. Maybe a long lens to compress the image a bit. Let's have a go, let's have a go. Got to take one. Right, so I've got the camera set up and at the moment I've got the 10 to 24 on, which is the one I've put the camera away with. So I'm gonna take this to start with and I'm focusing just on the start of the cotton grass. And the reason being is with it having a wide angle at 10 mil, in fact, it's not, it's 24 mil, sorry. It seems to have a line of cotton grass going through the image and then the rocks in the distance. So put me two second timer on, bracketed the shot, F11 to give me the depth. And I'm gonna hit that shutter button. Excuse me sniffing, but I haven't brought any tissue with me and I've got a bit of a cold still. I'm just gonna move the composition around slightly because there's a few more rocks just over on the edge. I'm gonna take that, relatively quick shutter speed, let the an aperture priority, it likes to do it for me. Uh, base setting is 125th of a second. So that's one taken with the wider angle lens and then I'm gonna swap the lens over and I'm gonna put the 18, the 16 to 80 on. This way it'll give me a slightly tighter image. Let's try this and then I might even put a longer one still on. So I've chucked that on there, put that back in the bag, switcher on, take the lens cap off. I've got no filters, I've had no filters on all day. Right, at 16 mil, it actually looks wider than the 24. Wow, it looks wider than the 24. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, let's zoom in a bit. Now I've got cotton grass and rocks, which is just a balance between the two, which looks quite nice. Zoom in a little bit more on the rocks. Make sure they're not clipping the edges of the frame. Get the camera nice and level. And the reason I'm looking for the viewfinder is it's bright behind me. So I'm focused on the cotton grass and it's a 50-50 image, to be honest. Uh, we split in between the two. The rocks are on the top half and the cotton grass on the bottom half. I wonder if I come down a little bit lower, maybe. It might just make a slightly different image, but be interesting to see the two style of images with the different focal length. Let's just drop the tripod just slightly and see if that makes a bit of a difference. Now I've got the rocks in the top of top third rather than splitting it down the middle. That's a little bit better. And it is, it's blowing a bit of wind, but I just like that difference between the softness of the cotton grass and the hardness of the rocks. It's quite nice that. Now I'm gonna try and move up a bit closer, but it's a bit boggy here. I've got a feeling cotton grass only grows in bog and it is a bit boggy in between all this. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer and come down a little bit lower again and uh, see if this works. struggling to find something that really floats my boat. <clears throat> Excuse the pun, that is. Yeah, no, I'm struggling a little bit. Um, I've actually come over and stood up on these rocks, as you can see behind me and that. I'm sat and stood on one of the top of these ones, quite 
pointy to stand on, but I managed to get up it. Um, can't let go of the tripod though, because the tripod really is just precariously seized, balanced on the edge of the rocks just there. Um, and this side, it's literally just right on the edge. <laughs> what is it with me and batteries? Yeah, I was just saying I can't let go of the tripod. I've just had to change the battery. So uh, yeah, I'm just literally balanced on the edge here at the moment. And what I've done is I've made the pool a little bit smaller. So I've made the pool a bit smaller, but I've used these rocks as, as, as an image setter, if you like, just somewhere to set, the, to set the frame, to set the photo up using these rocks to pull you around. I've got a vertical one as well. The vertical one's quite nice because these rocks right below me on the wide angle lens are pointing me straight in. Um, it's a bit muddy and boggy to the right hand side, but the pool's just small. But what is nice is it shows the pool uh, and, and the background and the distance so beyond the pool is all these the, the range if you like the, the planes behind it um so it's, it's it's a different way of looking at the shot rather than being up close if you can see over there um owen and denise are over there they're shooting really long exposures quite wide just a bit big, big, big just a big picture of the pool um so i just thought i'd try and do something a bit different to what they're doing i quite like it but it's not it's nothing special. You want to have some really nice conditions. Maybe you want to get home and process it and you know, maybe bring out a bit of texture in the grass, the texture in the rocks and bring out the clouds in the sky. Maybe it'll look all right, but uh, no award winning shot, but it's nice to actually be out and take photographs anyway. I don't mind what I'm doing as long as I'm taking photographs. Um, so yeah, that's not a bad little shot. I've got the wide angle on. I'm not sure what it was set at, probably around 20 mil. Um, F, let me just check for you. I was at F10. Uh, ISO 160 and again the shutter speeds are relevant it's doing what it was doing but what I have tried doing is I put the case filters on um, I put a 10 stop on to try and get a longer exposure about 15 seconds and I tried to get a really long exposure of about 30 seconds just to smooth that uh, the wind blowing on the water um, but it's nothing it's, it's nothing special but what it has given me is a little bit of movement in the cloud so we'll make something of it we'll make something of it I don't mind about that um, so yeah that's the shot pulls up on the right hand thirds Rocks leading you around from the left hand side uh, just to hold the image in rather than just a bit of you know, a blob of water. So yeah, that's not it. That's, that's not it. That's about it. I haven't got my teeth in today. I'm not talking very well. Let's see if we can get back down off this rock without slipping with both cameras in my hand because I'm not kidding you. It really is steep and I'm going to have to jump. Oh, I have to jump down on that one. Otherwise I wouldn't have made it. And now I've got one leg taller than the other legs on my tripod so I can't actually do anything with that. Let's see if I can untwist that and straighten it out there we go bring it down to a normal level and it'll stand up on its own then right so yeah that's where i was just stood on that there and you can see plenty of people have slipped down there so i know it's a risk but it was just to get up a bit higher so i had more of an elevation to look down on the pool rather than looking across it so yeah that's that one done i don't know whether we'll be taking any more we're going to head down i might just set up and get a tree picture of a tree on the way through because a nice little bit of wooded area that you've got to walk down um so i might take a picture there if not i'll check in down there and uh, say goodbye so yeah let's see what they're getting up to over that way go and have a talk Blah, blah, blah. Mr. Rose picked me camera up. He's videoing me because he sees I'm having a wobbly one up here. I've got my tripod balanced on the rocks and it just moved. And I've got people in me shot. I'm not feeling it. My mojo's getting booted around a bit by this wind and I'm not getting that out of the photos. This isn't a bad little shot. It's all right. It's quite nice. It's got a nice, nice shape to the image fluffy clouds but these two have been taking two minute photographs and I can't remember how to do it <laughs> I've got to go old school it means I've got to get me map out me app and start working it all out and what filters and stuff and do you know what <laughs> I can't be asked <laughs> oh I've got split image again now it's not I've got that stupid split image thing happened oh Digital diaphragm, micro. What's going on? We exposed. Oh, oh. Pressing that silly dial. Oh, what's happened? I don't want split image. I don't want digital. I don't want. I don't want. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's going all over the place. Got the settings. Got A AF M F. It's in there. Get focus beacon back. I've got it for one minute and people. 
and vibrations through the tripod because I can feel it. You got the image stabilised lens on. Yeah. But the image stabilizers off because it's on a tripod. Yeah. You, <laughs> you basically used you two have just forced your camera to do something. Well, put it this way, if you did two minutes, those people wouldn't be in your picture. You will on a minute. Forced your camera into submission. Oh, tripod's vibrating. And it's completely blown out. There's no sky left. 60 seconds. There's no sky left. There's no anything left. There's nothing there. So I don't know how you're doing it. 30 seconds. I'll show you in my calendar. 30, 30 seconds, it's fine. So I don't know. I've done 30 seconds. That's why I like aperture priority. We are just heading back down now, uh, heading down towards the edge of the roaches and then we're going to drop down to the car through the trees that I mentioned. Owen's just been bitten, not bitten, stung by a wasp between his fingers with his hands swelling up nicely. Uh, we're just checking our bags, see if we've got anything in here medics wise. We, all, we both carry a small first aid kit and some bits and pieces. So we're just checking to see what we've got, if anything that might uh, take the sting away. <laughs> but your dad's allergic, doesn't he? Yeah, his dad's allergic, so I'm sure if he was, he'd bring his own um, medikits out, look, first aid kit, she's going for it, she's going to get in there and have a look. So yeah, that's a bit of advice for you, if you're out and about, bring uh, vinegar, bring vinegar. <laughs> just in case you get some chips. No, just bring, make sure you bring some medication to cover any anything like that, wasps and stings. I don't get, you know, suffer with stuff like that, but it's making his fingers swell a bit. Right, well, to, I'll speak to you on uh, get out the wind a little bit further down. Right, I'm out the wind a little bit now, so I thought I'd just switch it back on and uh, just thank you all for watching. Uh, I've had, enjoy had a good day out. It's been fun walking across the top of the roaches, getting a bit of wind and air in our lungs. It's been good being out with Mrs C, even though I spent most of the time on the opposite side of the rocks and she. Um, but yeah, I see it's not always about the photographs, it's about being out and uh, exploring and looking and searching. I reckon I've got a couple of images I can play with. Once I get back to the computer, I'm sure that I'll make something out of them. I always tend to, but that's the, that's the beauty of having, or not the beauty, that's the, the problem with only having a weekend to come out. We only get the weather we're dealt, so we have to make the most of it. Uh, we could have come out for sunrise or sunset, but sunrise this morning was raining and uh, sunset's gonna be gray anyway. So uh, we don't have the opportunity. So, until next time, please like and subscribe as usual. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. And until then, get out and use your camera. No matter what happens and what the weather is, get out and shoot. Ciao for now. <laughs> what was that? Ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs>